we can see that a person who meditates for even just two weeks, 30 minutes a day, is, shows a different pattern of brain activity than when they started. That's incredible. After only two weeks, your brain begins functioning differently. Science has contributed to our understanding of the effects of meditation on the brain and body. The research that we've done on meditation in the brain has focused on two major domains that meditation actually affects. One is attention and the other is emotion. And what we have discovered is that the circuits in the brain that are important for regulating both attention and emotion can be transformed by meditation. This is very interesting because how I've always understood it and the way that it's been described often is that the practice of meditation is like an exercise for the mind. It is essentially the equivalent of doing a dumbbell curl but for your brain in the sense that you are placing your attention on an object of meditation, holding your attention in that place, and then noticing that when your mind loses its attention on that object of meditation that the awareness of your lost attention enables you to return your attention back so it's like a constant back and forth exercise that takes place and it truly strengthens your mind it enables you to become much more quickly of when you've become distracted and so for this scientist to be mentioning that there is evidence that parts of your brain correlated with memory and attention grow through a practice like meditation that makes total sense for sure. The 30,000 foot goal is to use the scientific research to um, understand the nature of suffering and how it can best be alleviated. And Ming Rinpoche was one of our first long-term practitioners. Uh, well, this will be strapped onto the arm and uh, we'll get your ratings of how... Uh, the normal, without meditation? Yes, yes, without meditation. Usually when you do this kind of research with either brain electrical measurements or MRI, it takes a lot of what we call post-processing to look at the data. And what post-processing means is simply um, lots of uh, computer algorithms churning at the data after the data is collected. And it often takes um, many, many days of computer processing to extract these really weak signals uh, in a lot of noise. Uh, it's finding a needle in a haystack. So this documentary was filmed in 2016. As of current, it is the end of 2024. I'm very interested to see what sort of technological advancements we've made since then in order to even more accurately measure someone's brain before and after meditation to be able to compare people's brains, people who've never practiced before with someone who's practiced for a long time. I feel like there's probably a lot greater research. There certainly is more research, but as far as technology goes, I would hope that there's even more effective tools to determine how effective and how helpful these practices really can be. That's, that's what's coming to my mind. With Mingyur Rinpoche, we didn't need any fancy post-processing. We actually were able to see a signal with our naked eye. Of course, the first thing we thought is that there's artifact and there's something wrong um, because it, you, this just is not something that we typically would see. And so then we had it go through the entire recording system and take everything apart and put it back together uh, before we convinced ourselves that this is actually real. Then uh, when we discovered that it was real, it was really quite amazing because nobody had ever seen these kinds of signals before for this um, length of time and what we were looking at are gamma oscillations in the brain. They're very fast frequency brain oscillations and they're seen in, in, in any ordinary person but they're seen for very very short periods of time, typically less than one second. They also don't have such large amplitude and when Miguel Rinpoche was meditating these signals were large, they were highly synchronized and they lasted for many, many minutes. They lasted for the entire time 
that the meditation session was in progress. They lasted for the entire time that the meditation session was in progress. It's quite a statement to be making. And, you know, just from personal experience, our practice of meditation can enable us to concentrate our minds. And so once you learn meditation or once you begin exploring the practice, it becomes apparent that there are many different ways to follow the practice, many different goals or outcomes that can be achieved through the practice. And so the another great example would be someone who had been practicing loving kindness meditation, which is essentially meditating on an emotion and experiencing that more and more and more until you know you you feel a very strong sense of love within you and you know for the world around you you, you can practice meditation in a way where the outcome is a very strong feeling of love at the end of the meditation there's also meditation practices that like mindfulness promote the overall idea of awareness and that by instead of being in the river of life sitting at the edge of the river and watching it flow by that there is utility in that which often leads to you know less anxiety less stress and Generally speaking, the ability to view things from an objective perspective, and that can be helpful in many different ways. You know, as you know, as far as uh, career success, school, relationships. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of endless how beneficial these practices can be. But to the point here of signals in the brain which would normally only be seen for less than a second actually being seen for the entire time that the meditation session was in progress really shows you that it is very possible to control your mind and that by utilizing various forms of meditation you can achieve outcomes that quite literally aren't possible in a normal everyday sense by being able to utilize your brain in a way that you wouldn't normally utilize it. Uh, and that's what made them very visible. So that was really uh, a very important moment because we knew from that from a scientific perspective, there was a there there. We knew from a scientific perspective that there's a there there. Absolutely amazing. So glad that that was mentioned in this. We can see that a person who meditates for even just two weeks, 30 minutes a day, is, shows a different pattern of brain activity than when they started. That's incredible. After only two weeks, your brain begins functioning differently. Two weeks before. And that is really important because it suggests that the brain really is plastic that we really can make these changes and that it actually doesn't take that much. A total of seven hours of practice was sufficient to change the brain in very objective, measurable ways. Absolutely incredible. I love this. I got to meet this doctor and maybe one day I'll be able to interview him. But, you know, that's amazing. This is what I'm absolutely fascinated by. And he, you know, touched all the meaningful points, you know, highlighting the effects of meditation from a biological scientific perspective and how only in a very short period of time, relatively speaking, someone can change the way that their brain and their mind functions. I'm really interested to hear from your perspective what you think about this. And I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed watching this video and if you would like to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until next one, I love you all. Peace.